Welcome back everybody and welcome to our online students. Today what we're going to do is take a look at the size of atoms and the size of ions. And it has to do with energy levels, it has to do with electrons, it has to do with quantum mechanics. It's going to help us to predict the relative sizes of one atom versus another. So the explanation of the relative size of atoms has something to do with this value of n. And so if we were to draw a periodic table, and I'm going to make an artistic representation here. This is not a real periodic table, but something like this ish, okay? Like if you have an actual periodic table that your professor, if they really loved you, made available to you, on this periodic table, we've got all of these elements, and we have these different values of n, and we have up here, n equals 1, n equals 2, and it goes all the way down to 7, and it could continue on if at some point we find more elements. Now these values of n tell us the size and the energy of orbitals. This is our first quantum number. It tells us the size and the energy of orbitals. So as we go down like this, our energy levels are getting greater. We're getting further away from the nucleus of the atom and our atoms get bigger, our atoms get bigger. So then, if we were to map out where are our biggest atoms on our periodic table, biggest atoms on the periodic table, okay, stick your hand out like this, okay? Now, make it like a little fist, you got your thumb, okay. Now you are, it's like you're the emperor of Rome, or it could be an empress, okay? All right, now. We've got all these elements on our periodic table, all these elements on the periodic table. Biggest element, biggest element here, use your thumb, up or down? Down, okay, yeah, down. Okay, not that one. Okay, let's, let's try again. Biggest element, down, okay, all right, good. Just kind of working my way around here. Biggest element. I've got some thumbs up, I've got some thumbs down, and I've got, you're not sure, you're not committing. Yeah, you're not committing. Do you, do you, do you have a fear of commitment? <laughs> okay, I do too. I do too, yeah. Um, the third time, it, no, okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, so. So is this the biggest element? Is the question? Okay, you put your thumbs down now. So the question is, what, what's the what's the biggest element here? All right. Now here is a diagram from your textbook that shows us the relative sizes of the elements of, uh, on the periodic table, each of these atoms. And as we can see over here in the lower left-hand corner, here's cesium. That looks like the biggest, fattest element on our periodic table. Although this is not the whole periodic table. Okay. And you look up at the top there in the upper left-hand corner, you can see there's hydrogen. Yep, that's pretty small. Helium, the up, that's pretty small. Okay, but it seems like cesium is pretty big. Cesium is pretty big. And it kind of makes sense as we go down this way, increasing values of N, as we go down the left-hand column here, N gets larger. So therefore, more energy levels, more shells, those atoms should be bigger. That makes sense. So on your periodic table, what I would what I would write is I'd go like this. I'd say size, right, like that. Or you could say radius, radii, gets bigger as you go this way and also gets bigger as you go this way, okay? Radii is just plural for radius. Right, so the biggest, fattest element on the periodic table, now this doesn't show all the elements, but if you look at an actual periodic table with all the elements, which element should be the biggest, fattest element on the periodic table? Francium, yeah, francium. And if you know anything about France, if you know anything about France, um, they know something about food. I, it's a stereotype, but, but, it, but it's a good one. That's a good stereotype to go with, right? If you want to be known for something, good food. That's not a bad one. My wife and I were dating a long time ago, and she, she used to live in France. 
And then she came to the States and she met this poor person here. And, and she's like, we should go back to France. They've got really awesome food and stuff. And I was like, ah, oh, France. You know, I've watched a lot of TV. And, and, and on TV, the French are really rude and obnoxious. I don't want to go there. And I'd spend time in the military. And in the military, we didn't like France. This was back in the 19th. It was a long time ago. And, and there's this little dust up between the United States and this former French colony. And they wouldn't let our airplanes fly over their airspace. So our pilots had to wear diapers. And we accidentally dropped a bomb on their embassy. I know, right? So I didn't like France. And then she said, well, one of the best ways to overcome prejudice is, is to go and spend some quality time with, with whatever it is that you fear. And so she, she took me to France, kicking and screaming. It, it was a scene on the airplane. But we went to France, and I got there, and the people were wonderful. They were very nice. They were polite. I think it helped that she spoke French. I just spoke ignorant American. Y'all got baguettes with that, right? And, and we had the most amazing time. And the food was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. Does anybody here know what fragua is? Fragua? I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Yeah, in the United States, it's illegal, so we use duck. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody know what fragua is? Yeah. It's goose liver. Yeah, it's a goose liver pate. Um, we were at a restaurant, and she orders a bunch of stuff because the menu's in French. I don't understand. And out comes this stuff, and I'm like, what is it? She said, just eat it. Yeah, that's a good husband, right? Okay, I ate it. It was really good. A little bit of Dijon mustard on there, right? It was amazing, absolutely amazing. And I'm like, what is this? She says, it's frog wine. I'm like, that sounds great. What is it? You don't want to know. Yeah, it's rendered goose liver. Um, and it's illegal in the United States because it's really not good for the geese. I mean, seriously, it's not good for the geese how they do this. All right, so anyway, why am I telling you this? Because when I went to France, I put on a, some weight France is the biggest, fattest element on the periodic table. You better never forget that. <laughs> so the size gets bigger as we go down the periodic table. The size gets bigger as we go down the periodic table as we have increasing values of n. And then as we go across the periodic table, going from left to right, it gets smaller. And the question is, why does it get smaller as we go left to right? So if I go back here, question is, why, why does it get smaller as we go this way, as we go across? And as we go across, we're in the same energy level, so like the same shell where the electrons are at, but we increase the number of protons. So it's like the same orbit, but we have a bigger sun, or the sun has more pull on it. All right, so as we go across, we increase our value of, of, of protons, more protons, pull those electrons in, and the atoms get smaller. So this is why as we go across, atom size decreases as we go across a row because we have more protons pulling those electrons in. And atoms will tend to gain or lose electrons. They'll tend to gain or lose electrons so that they can have a Nobel gas configuration. So as we take a look at our periodic table over here, over here we have our noble gases. Noble gases over here on our periodic table. And elements tend to gain or lose electrons, so that way they have the same number of electrons as what they'd have here. So in this very first column right here, this very first column, if you check on your periodic tables and you look at the top, that very first column has a plus how much? Plus 1. Because these elements here. These elements here tend to give up one electron, electrons having a negative charge. They give up one electron, and then they have the same number of electrons as a Nobel gas. The next column over here would be plus two, right? They give up two electrons. And as they give up two electrons, then they have a Nobel gas configuration. So elements on this side of the periodic table, and I'll just kind of go like this, kind of like this, they tend to be positive. They tend to give up electrons, and so we call these cations. They tend to give up electrons. They tend to be 
positive cations. And then over here, they tend to gain electrons. They gain electrons so that way they can have a Nobel gas configuration. And we call these anions. Anions. Now, it was a student a while ago taught me the way that she remembers cations from anions is that cats, cats have paws. Paws. Like, oh, that works. Okay, yeah. Cations positive, anions negative. Now, as we gain or lose electrons, we change the size of our atoms. And so if we lose electrons, such as cations, if we lose electrons, then our atoms get smaller. And as we gain electrons, our atoms get bigger. It's kind of like our solar system. If we add more planets, solar system gets bigger. If we remove planets, it gets smaller. Is Pluto a planet? I don't know. Fight an astronomer. This is chemistry. Okay. All right, so positive ions tend to be larger. Anions tend to be smaller. No, I said that backwards. Did I? Yes, these get smaller, these get bigger. Add electrons get bigger, remove electrons get, pop, get larger. Okay. All right, so now we can take two different elements and have the same number of electrons. We call this isoelectronic. Isoelectronic. Um, Isoelectronic. Iso means the same, electronic means electrons. And so what this means is um, two or more atoms slash ions with the same number of electrons. Okay, so two or more um, atoms or ions that have the same number of electrons. So here's oxygen. Oxygen tends to form a two minus ion. It picks up two electrons, so it can have a Nobel gas configuration, isoelectronic with neon. It has the same number of electrons as neon, isoelectronic with neon. And then here's fluorine. fluorine which is next to oxygen, picks up one electron and then becomes isoelectronic with neon. Same number of electrons as neon. And then here we have neon. Okay, so neon, all of these have 10 valence, excuse me, 10 electrons. They all have 10 electrons. What do you notice, though, about their sizes? Can you put this into words for me? Yeah. Different sizes because they have a different number of protons. Yes, exactly. Different sizes because they have different numbers of protons. And is, what is the relationship between protons and size? More protons, smaller. Yeah, more protons pull in those electrons become smaller. Nice, excellent, excellent. All right. Okay, so here we have a group of ions, a group of ions. And the question is, can you arrange these based on their atomic radius? Which one's bigger? Which one's smaller? Or I don't know. Okay? So in your notes, write down these ions. Write down these ions. And then I would write down their atomic number. Oh, there you go. Pick it up. Pick up the talking eraser. You've got it there? Oh, wonderful. Okay. You've got the talking eraser. And, and we're going to pass it around because we're going to share the love because we want everybody on the island to have the opportunity to share what they know. Okay. All right. So help me out here. I need to know what the atomic numbers are for these elements. Can you help me with that? So let's start out with our iodine here. What do we have for that? Pardon me? 53. 53 is the atomic number. That's our number of protons. How about cesium? 
55. Okay, would you pass that on to the next person there? Next person on the island. There we go. Hi there. Could you help me out here? What do we do with dead chemists? That's okay. What do we do with dead chemists? Yes, there we go. All right, thank you for playing. All right, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. You, you, you very kindly gave me an answer and that was 56, right? Okay, so 56, okay, and then 52. Okay, nicely done, thank you very much. Would you please pass that talking stick on to the next person there? And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to make some blanks here and I'm gonna go like this, like this, like this. And I'm gonna say smallest and largest. Okay, who's got the talking stick? Ah, excellent, okay, nice. Now, I need to know which one of these is the smallest. Which one is the smallest? Or, but you know what, before that, maybe, does it ask us here which, these are all isoelectronic with something. Do we know what they're isoelectronic with? But let's do that. What are they isoelectronic with? They all have the same number of electrons as what element? The same, yep. So iodine, if it picks up one electron, it is isoelectronic with which element? It's okay, you've got friends. Friends will help. Xe, yes, yes. So Xe, so they're isoelectronic with xenon, yes. And I know it starts with an X, but we pronounce it xenon because English is weird. Okay, nicely done. Could you please hand that to the next person? Who's gonna be our next volunteer? Okay, you know, why? we're just going like left to right. Let's share the love. Pass it, pass it, yeah. Go ahead, just tap on the shoulder there. There you go. Hey, we're equal opportunity here. Okay, which, el which element is gonna be the smallest, do you think? Or excuse me, which species here, which ion? Yeah, which one of these things is gonna be the smallest? Tellurium? Yeah, this one here? Okay, this one should be the smallest one. Okay, and if you had to guess again. That's okay, that's okay, we're not sure. So let's, let's just backtrack for a moment, let's just backtrack. Look at this, oh, look at this here. Which one's smallest? Oh yeah, for this one, look up here. Which one's smallest? Neon is the smallest. They all have the same number of electrons. They all have 10 electrons. Neon is the smallest because it has more port protons, yes. So they all have the same number of electrons. Whichever one has the most protons will be the smallest, okay? So let's just fast forward here. Which one of these has the most protons? Which one has a bigger number? Barium, yes, okay, barium. So I'm gonna go barium plus two. Barium will be nicely done. This is why we practice this. This is why we practice this. Thank you. So would you please pass that to somebody? Preferably somebody who has given you kind of, you know, those sly looks that are going, I don't know. Okay, all right, here's your chance. Go ahead, pass it on. There you go. Okay. Barium should be the smallest because it has the most protons. I'm gonna pull those electrons in. Which one should then be the largest? Yep, tellurium, yep. So T E minus two. Nicely done. Okay, and then we can just fill in the blanks here. So then we'd have cesium, Cs plus, 
and then we'd have iodine minus. And all we're doing here really is we're just ordering, order, ordering them based on the number of protons. More protons will be smaller, um, fewer protons would be larger. Okay, nicely done. Could you toss that, oh yeah, oh, I, oh. it was a good throw, it was my bad. That, yeah, I was always the last kid picked at the playground, you know. Was, but, okay. Um, all right, so then follow up question here, follow up question, select which of these would be the smallest. Which of these would be the smallest? And check with your neighbors. Oh, all right, folks, let's, let's see what we have. Let's check with our neighbors. And howdy, neighbor. Would you be my neighbor? Awesome. Um, could you help me out here? I have these three different um, species of iron. I've got iron that is three plus, two plus, and then just plain old neutral iron. And my question is, which one of these should be the smallest? Which one do you feel would be the smallest? I was thinking A. You were thinking A, all right. Can you help me through what you're thinking? Why did you choose A? Electrons, yep, different numbers of electrons, okay. And which one has lost electrons? A, yep, it lost electrons. If it loses electrons, it becomes smaller. So um, I'm, just, I'm just being a big gas bag here. You have the right answer. I just wanna make sure we understand why it is correct. Um, and it's not just because you're my neighbor. It's, it's sound chemical reasoning, right? If, we, if the atom gives up electrons, it becomes small. Okay, nicely done. Thank you very much.